you got like two minutes. We're live. I don't know what you're bitching about. Do you even have your like? Uh, I had it sitting there. Monitor. What do, I do with it? I don't know what you did. Oh, there's know. something on my back. Is this oh, it? That's it. <laughs> Hit your light over there. Mm. Wow, there's a big delay because still, it still hasn't shown up yet. Mine's on Insta. Yeah, yours is already on, but mm. ours is not. I don't know what a problem is. I wonder if it'll be problems. like last time and again mine's the one. <laughs> this could yeah. go. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go over here and double check things real quick. Let's see. Oh, I forgot. I forgot to hit turn on. You know, it smelled very bready. Bready? You yeah. thought it smelled yeasty? Mm-hmm. It smells different now. But that was when you had first poured it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's see what we can see here. I'm, I'm not getting any type of uh, announcement at all. Pour for you. Did you kick me off the page or something on? Am I no longer? Nope. I'm on the page. Let's see here what we got. It says we're live. Larry says greetings. All right. Hi, Larry. Sean says... Hey, hey, some of my favorite people. Sean Rats. Yeah. Hi, Sean. I love you. <laughs> Hope you like my artwork. Yeah, for whatever reason, I'm not getting anything. Oh, well. I don't know. I don't know nothing. Like I said, all I know how to do is press the live button. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share her feed because I'm getting her feed and I'm getting nothing from, from, from ours. Does mine pop up on Facebook? My no, Instagram it feed? it shows up on Instagram. Yeah, on Insta. Ugh. Shockingly, way more people watch my stuff on Instagram. I don't, I don't even understand it. I make a story and like 100 people view it. I'm like, I, do I even know 100 people? Like, I don't even well, yeah, know. Well, yeah, of course you do. <laughs> oh. Let's see here. Well, even though... Uh, now I have no internet connection. Even though we can't see you on these doohickeys hey, hey, here. Here we are. There you are. Um, Let's see here. So we're not uh, silent while you're watching and being bored. Um, we pour, I poured... Uh, we're drinking... Michael Chaputier. I don't even know who we are yet. You're like j way jumping the gun. Just like. What tells from the line? I feel bad that some, we're sitting here and, make, and they're watching and we're not saying nothing. Yeah, make, make, some, uh, uh, make some music sounds. Sing us a song. Sing us a song, yeah. yeah. Like. Bad chick a wow wow. No, no, no. Like sing us like a song, a song. I'm like, not a singer. Is, I don't know. You're not a singer? No. Can't sing uh, nothing. See, now it's, now it's about. Again, I don't know why it's not. I don't know why it's not showing up, but it's not. And it's saying there's no internet connection. Hmm. All right. I think. I think. Did Facebook go down again? Did I didn't even know Facebook went down on Monday. We were on the well, golf course. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I know. Uh. So awesome! Awesome. Well, evidently they got notifications because Sean and uh, Larry got it. Oh, you see, we're we're live now. Yeah, it's still just not. It's showing just up. a slow I can't even notification. See I can't even go to. I can't even go to Tails. Tails isn't even showing up. Tails from the lounge isn't even showing up for me. Uh, I got to show up. Oh, uh, so did, did you kick me off your internet connection? Because I, I I'm showing that there's no internet connection. Uh, I didn't. Huh. That doesn't mean anything. You never know. Here. Let's play a mute little music for a minute. You can do that. Yeah, we're getting set up. Look at you. 
You can do that. But the first thing <laughs> is, <laughs> I gotta mute that. Sometimes things work out and sometimes well, they don't. You know what? I'm just gonna turn my phone off. What are you gonna do? Do a restart. Maybe it'll That's work. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Mm. All right, but are we ready ready anyway? Yeah, pretty much. Give me just two minutes here. Okay, but we have plenty of time mags. Yeah, we got plenty of time. That's what, that's what I was told out. 26 minutes ago. Oh, it no problem. 26 minutes ago. We got plenty of time, plenty of time. No, you're this right. Is, it is, was 18 minutes ago. Chris exactly. Is no, actually. Chris is going to keep it, it up, right he's going to get fired. What time is it right now? It was, uh, it was 21 minutes ago that you said, oh, that's plenty of time. Well, you know, my biggest thing is I keep remembering that I don't have any help setting anything up. I have to wipe everything down. And You're the IT professional. I always give you plenty of time, and you sit in the kitchen saying, we've got plenty of time. I wasn't sitting in the kitchen. <laughs> yep, see, see you guys see. The two times she's been here, he's done it. Hey, uh, at, least, at, least the, at least ours is working this time. That is true. <laughs> That's true. Uh, that is also true. All right, let's see if this helps anymore. Oh, look at that. It's almost like we were sorry to shop with our bean. <laughs> it is. I tell you what, yeah, as long as we're not as late as Saturday as the shop is on Saturday, then I I'm, I'm, think we're golden, man. And I thought they were supposed to do their... Oh, there we go. I got it. Uh, the, the restart helped. Um, I thought that um, their Tuesday night thing was supposed to be around 7 or 7.30, but every week it starts later and later. And later oh, it does. And oh, yeah. later. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so there we go. We got four people in. Sean... Larry, me, you, and 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 uh, and and Mags are in. So good. There's four of us. Or five. All right. Welcome everybody. And let me cut this down. Welcome everybody to Tales from the Lounge Cigar Company Spotlight. Tonight we're not doing a cigar company. We're doing a cigar pairing with our buddy Maggie over here, Magnolia. The Magnolia Washburn, hey, the Cellar yeah. Geek, Burgundy Geek, and how do you like our new logo? Hey, that was it not looks there professional. It, it was not there. The it was time. not there the last time you were here. I'm so glad to. And I'm short enough. Y'all can still see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not blocking it. <laughs> yeah, that may change on uh, some of our other guests. That's for sure. Uh, so how's everybody doing tonight? I'm Ron. I'm Chris. I'm Magnolia. And. Welcome everybody. We are going to be drinking some wine. We're going to be drinking, uh, smoking Byron Grand Poemas. And as you know, it just doesn't get any better than that. Any day we can sit around and smoke cigars and drink wine or... Texas weather's good right now. And it is. Feels it is. great outside. Uh, and if you guys are hearing the traffic outside, I apologize. But it's so nice outside, I opened up the garage door and we're just going to let it roll. How's everybody doing today online? All right. I've got everything shared out to everybody. It's about time. Uh, yeah. And we, and we still, besides, besides the wine, of course, we would be remiss not to give everyone an update uh, uh, about the ha second annual Hackfest. And that's yeah. why I'm partially He's in character. Still... I'm partially in character. Thank well, God they did only... say you would be in character for three days after the Hackfest. <laughs> No, no, no. I, lingering I, effects. Lingering effects. Sometimes he pops up, but for the most part, he's he's put away till next year. So we'll see. <laughs> He'll pop up, I'm sure, during the show. People are like, who's he talking about? You'll see. We'll see. <laughs> when we get to that part. So the Hackfest was a roaring success. Lots of cigars. Cinderella story. Out. It was a huge story. It was great. Oh, it was God. perfect. Please make it stop. Yes. It was perfect. I like it. <laughs> former former assistant groundskeeper coming out of nowhere. I had great shots, great shots. <laughs> the Dolly, the Dolly Lama. We had trouble keeping uh, Chris away from the old women. <laughs> he uh, uh, he got into tr uh, a couple of sexual harassment charges against him now from old ladies. He kept 
harassing, but other than that, everything went smoothly. <laughs> uh, you said uh, preliminary count is we raised thirty five thousand dollars for the Gary Sinise I, I, Foundation. I, I, I would, I wouldn't even. I mean, I think that's what they're hoping. I mean, that's super preliminary. I know that last year we had 94, 96 participants. This year we had 136. So that's 40 more. You do some math on the money. We did the silent auction this mm -hmm. year. Well, we had the we had the uh, uh, ball launcher too, which raised uh, who knows how much money. Yeah, um, they did. Uh, so you know, last year they raised a little over twenty thousand dollars. So I, I I don't know. I would. I, I don't want to get too excited. I, I'll wait till they, you know, announce a, a final number. But any I, number it, is exciting, Chris. Any number I mean, is, it's but it's a I, great charity. But I'm thinking they probably are pretty. It, I'm pretty close to thirty, somewhere between thirty thirty five is what I. Well, people thinking. who don't know, why don't we mention the charity we're talking about? The Gary Sinise Foundation. Yep. And the reason we do that is because the general manager there at Industrial Cigar Company, who sponsors the uh, tournament has received a house from Gary Sinise's foundation as a disabled vet. He got a leg blown off, and uh, we do the Hackfest uh, the second annual, and we do a Caddyshack-themed uh, uh, golf tournament, and the scores don't matter, and only the fun matters. And there was a lot of gimmick holes and a lot of fun stuff going on, a lot of free cigars, a lot of free whiskey and bourbon, Oh, and if you were there, you definitely had a good time. What am yeah. I missing? Um, no, I mean, that's that's a good quick summary of it. Um, you know, the, the one thing that uh, the Gary Sinise Foundation, not only for veterans, but all first responders. So policemen, yeah, that's right. I was surprised when they said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, just a terrific organization. And uh, Gary actually sent... Uh, a a letter. letter to all the participants that Brandon Byers uh, read out to everyone before uh, everyone teed off. Um, so that was exciting. We're going to start a, we, I'm going to start a lot, letter writing campaign to him and, and I think Bill Murray to see if we can get one of them to show up next year. We just had great pictures. Uh, if you haven't seen some of the pictures, some of the tremendous pictures and I haven't had a chance to post more. Uh, I haven't posted anything on Facebook yet. I need to do that tonight and tomorrow. Uh, but I have posted some on Facebook or on uh, Instagram. And a bunch of more photos are coming up. And mm -hmm. it was a phenomenal time. And there's a great picture of you, Magnolia. She's, it's it's terrific. She's she's ready for the putt, man. She's she's ready to drop that long putt. And it's uh, you know it, it's very Caddyshack esque. <laughs> uh, and it's it it's theme. Um, it so. was my first time playing golf, and you know there's this golf movie I watched once that really tells you how to play it called Happy Gilmore. I figure that's, uh, <laughs> that's what you do that when you putt. So you know, uh, that qualifies. You know it was there time to putt. I got on the ground and did a little pool action shot there, there you go. to it, get it in. It's it was a great picture. It's one of the pictures I've already decided when I send the letters off to entice a. Hey, Bill Murray, this Caddyshack theme. Look how these people dress up. Look at the fun they're having. It's definitely one of the pictures I want to include in the letter. I'd had a little bit of bourbon by then, and I didn't really? realize in the photo, <laughs> I'm using my feet as uh, balancing. Yeah. <laughs> they're sticking up like a Y. I guess I was trying to ba balancing. I'm laying flat on You're the ground, down, but my feet are sticking straight up like I'm trying yeah. to stay straight. It was good. It was great. Um, yeah, uh, Sean mentioned that uh, had a great time. That he had a great time. Just wish he'd been able to finish some of the holes. There was some miscommunication. The other, the golf course did have another tournament, um, and they were stacked a little close to each other. Uh, those of you that were uh, at Hackfest, if you have feedback, go to the industrial uh, page. Mm -hmm. They have a spot for you to give feedback and suggestions. You'll see the picture of me, and you can click the link there. Uh, so please do that because they definitely want that. Um, and we know that that was a uh, an issue, but that wasn't really a hack fest issue. That was kind of the, mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. country, golf, course the golf course issue, but definitely something that we need to make sure is addressed next year. But thanks again to all the participants, all the vendors, and everyone. Some who, great vendors who you know uh, gave out money. Um, Had Lone Elm, Crux yeah. Cigars, 
Um, yeah, Principal, tons. Patoro, United, DC. Patoro, yeah, DC. Uh, uh, Crown Heads out of Nashville was there yeah. as well. Uh, you also had um, Hotel Tango. Oh, yeah, surprise. When we oh, pulled up, I was yeah. like, oh, man, Hotel Tango. I what, I, I, Line I, it up. I, I took a shot of everything. Uh, and their <laughs> yeah. gin. Is their gin not good or what? I didn't try the gin. Oh, the gin. I didn't really want to mix my alcohol. <laughs> I suck with brown. Now let's talk about the most important thing about Hackfest. What's the most important thing? I looked awesome. <laughs> <laughs> What's that pattern called you were wearing? I have no clue. Uh, uh, little crosses. We were talking about it, at the shop yesterday. You got so the skull looked, and crossbone. It yeah, looked, it it looked a, like they just threw up on you. Because yeah. the, <laughs> the top and the bottom match with the cross uh, pattern yeah, on there, it. Yeah, there, there was well, the skull and instead of bones it was uh golf clubs besides was, besides from my tattoo dave um you and ray probably had the two ray. best outfits out yeah there. but ray was just trying to copy my outfit ray yeah, was all blue or were you he trying like to copy smart... his i mean oh, no, no, who no, no, got no. theirs first y'all both you and ray both went same color like you were all red and ray was all, all blue, blue. <laughs> yep. he just didn't pull it off as good as i did um but uh, and then of course, uh, yeah, I I I I had help from the setup crew from Ron and those characters by them dumping uh, about twenty gallons of That's cold uh, tent water. Tent well, water you know, on me as and, we were and, setting and up. you say twenty gallons. That's only a, a a little bit of an exaggeration. There was a lot of water. But that's only because some people didn't put their tents up properly and. Uh, yeah. Once they turned the sprinkler systems on the night uh, yeah, overnight, yeah, yeah. the uh, the sagging the canopies out. filled up with water, yeah. and when we tried to finish setting them up and definitely some uh, some 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 suggestion improvements for our setup crew and who should be setting up tents and who should not, <laughs> for sure. So, but, what are we drinking right now? Or what are we you know? gonna be drinking? Since I, I I've been waiting for you to She's tell like, me. Oh, what I've been drinking it already. I, know. I mean. I wanted you, you to know. tell us first before I started drinking. Oh, so, yeah, tell us what, what it is. Uh, this is um, by Michael Chapoutier. So that is the producer's name. He makes a lot of uh, wines. One of his uh, telltale signs that you get a Michael Chapoutier, it's hard to see probably on camera, but this is Braille on the label. So as the story goes that I've heard over and over again, is he had a buddy that was blind. And his buddy was telling, uh, talk, they were talking, and he goes, man, what do you do when you want to get some booze? You're an adult. You're going in a liquor store. How do you know what you're getting? And he goes, well, I always have to ask for help to find something. And the story goes that Michael was like, I mean, that's ridiculous. You're an adult. You should be able to go in there and find what you want. Well, I'm going to make sure you can at least find mine. So he was one of the first people that started putting Braille on his labels. So it is legit. Every single Michael Chapoutier bottle you get, there's Braille on it that tells you what the wine is. So if you're blind, you can go in and get his wines. Now, um, you know, that makes perfect sense. You just got to have someone walk make, you over to the wine, though. Because how do I know where the wine is? <laughs> hey, I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. And what doesn't make sense <laughs> is Braille on the drive-up ATM machine. Right. That I is agree. a good point. Yeah. So. Yeah, that is a good point. Um, this is uh, Chateauneuf du Pop. So that means uh, it has Grenache as the um, grape varietal. It's very juicy um, grape, uh, bigger body. This one is from 2015, so it has age on it. That's why it is softened up a bit. It's also right. been open for an hour. Yeah, it doesn't smell like it did when you first opened it. Up. Mm, it's changed, yeah. So how long do you recommend having a bottle open before you take the first drink on it it all depends on what type of wine it is the bigger body it is uh and age both play a factor on how long you should have it open for um you know if you have a bordeaux or a cabernet sauvignon from california those are big boys you want to open up an hour or two i've had three to four hours open for wines i've had wines you drink the next mm. day and they're drinking differently mm. you know it's all just to kind of play it by ear if you have a lighter bodied wine pinot noir a, a burgundy for example um you kind of have to play it by ear you know if it's from the von romani region that's a bigger burgundy it's all just you know a little here and there try it taste it open the bottle if it tastes 
you know, really high tannin and bitter and everything, give it a little bit of air. Let it breathe a little bit. If it tastes fine, put the cork back in it and drink it when you're ready, you know. So just kind of play by ear. Well, you know, and and, and I, I've, I've got the wine decanter, but I almost never use it because I usually, when I open a bottle, I just drink the whole thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But... Such a lush. I, I am a lush, and I'll be the first to admit it. You know my motto. What's going on, Austin? Alcoholism. Congrats on your to uh, engagement, too. I don't know if we've congratulated you on here. Uh, yes, congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, but watching you open that up and pour that in there so mm. that it would sit made perfect sense. And now what I'll start doing is opening the bottle, pouring it into the decanter, letting it breathe for a while mm -hmm. before I take the first glass. Then I'll drink it all. For a while. Like, <laughs> Taste it, How long you know? can you wait? Like five minutes, Ron? You let it wait five minutes? Oh, I have plenty of whiskey. I can drink the whiskey okay. until I'm, yeah. I'm ready you for You know, the wine. taste it. You know, um, Chris smelled it as soon as I opened it. You said it had a bit of a yeast smell to it. It did. A um, little bit like bread. Yeah. And it's great to open it, smell it, taste it. And then, you know, 30 minutes later, give it a sniff and a taste and move on and see how it develops. Wine yeah. will develop in your glass. I wish change. I had tasted it. I didn't taste it then. Mm -hmm. But now, I mean, it's, uh, like you said, it's very juicy. Yeah, Grenache is a juicy um, grape. Mm. Uh, very, very light. It is light. 2015, it's really aged and calmed down. If you would have drank this back when it got released, it probably would have had a lot more higher tannins mm -hmm. and feel more bigger body. This one's calmed down a bit. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. So, and... Cigars and wines, my friends. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Something I wanted to bring up. And you've poured it to get... <clears throat> decanter so we're gonna have to drink all of it at some point tonight apparently yes well it drinks very easily so i expect it to be gone okay um Sounds good. yesterday i was talking to busy yep and he was making some good questions and points on kind of basic hacks of wine that i was bringing up to him so one of the hacks we were talking about the decanter that you have yep. if you don't have a decanter at home which everybody does not right just use a large vessel a lot of people typically have coffee pots i have used several coffee pots decanting wine so use a coffee pot rinse it out with well, a little bit of water they are decanters yeah it's just a vessel for the wine to decant in a big pitcher um, a pitcher would work, you know, just yeah. something of a vessel that you can pour out of. Um, I would not suggest using a vase. That's the only thing. Don't grab a vase that you had flowers in because oh. that is some grime in there. There's going to jack your wine up. Don't do that. But coffee pots are great because the jack flavoring in it's already is in wine. Term. Yeah, it's a technical term. <laughs> jack it up. Yeah, jack it up. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking, you know, tips on uh, if you go and shop at Aldi's. A lot of people go to Aldi's and they've got the wine section there on tips on how to go get Aldi wine. Aldi has some great wines. Um, only what about thing, Kroger? Kroger, sure. Uh, you know, they have a lot of, a grocery store is going to have more of the general public wines. Right. You're going to have They're Naomi, gonna have Kendall Holmes Jackson. You're going to have some Behringer's normal wines. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you go anywhere and you're getting wines, great deals everywhere for wines. You can get something great $15 and under. This one in particular is not a $15 wine, but you can get great $15 and under wine. Next time you're down here and for the show, I'm insisting on I buy the wine. <laughs> I feel bad as a host that you had to bring the wine. You got the cigars. I said, I get the juice, you get the stick. I know, I know, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> a good uh -oh. thing to look for uh, good value wines, and I tell everybody this, is the alcohol percentage. Look at the label to alcohol percentage. If you're looking at something that's 13% lower, you're drinking a lot of water with your wine. So look for something that's 13.5% or higher, uh, red or white really. And that's really a good safe zone that you know you're not getting a watered down bottle. If you're going to spend your money, make sure it's got wine in the bottle, right? And not right. half water. So exactly. That's a good cheat sheet to look for whenever you're looking at labels. Now, I don't want you to get angry with me. But you know, I'm not an overly picky guy with wines. I'm not a wine connoisseur yet. <clears throat> but I found a little a cheap bottle at Total Wine one time, mm -hmm. and it was only like two or three dollars a bottle. That's pretty cheap. That's pretty cheap. It was it was really cheap. Was it two buck chuck? <laughs> there was a lot, of water, a lot of water in that, probably right. It was probably, Ooh, probably yeah. a lot of water. Mm. But you know, yeah. for a, for a, 
for somebody who was just going to sit down and chug a bottle, it was it was okay. Was you it? know. Now, if I was, how I was the hangover? Oh, uh-huh. the hangover wasn't bad, but I don't get hangover. <laughs> right. Uh, knock on wood, I don't get hangover. Water, water and sugar. I drink man. enough. I drink enough whiskey to offset any mm. <laughs> hangover that wine might give me. But I used to buy that, uh, and I haven't bought it in a long time. But I picked up a couple of bottles because they're like three bucks. Let me try it. You know, I mean, sure. So uh, my wife says, "I can't believe you're drinking that mess." I'm like, "Whatever," you know. Get, said, next time, get yourself a bladder bottle. A bladder bottle. <laughs> I, like you just tap into it, drink it all week long. That's you know, right. get a good bladder bottle in. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the other bottle that we have tonight? The other one is something I have not had before. So um, it says on here it's a dessert wine. It's sweeter. So I figured it'd be something different. Last time we had a Madeira. Mm -hmm. So we were talking into the sweets and how that is. This one. um, You even brought a port too last time Yeah. So this is uh, called a Dulce Monastrel. Monastrel is... um, Similar to, not what we're drinking, but the varietal. It's a big, juicy varietal. It's okay. got a lot of tannins in it, a lot of juice, a lot of acidity. This one's sweet. Um, it has to be, this bottle in particular has to be fortified because it is, what's that number? 16% alcohol. Yes. Ah. So that is quite high. High, high, high ports and stuff you are going to get into 20%. But 16% is still high. So this has to have some booze in it. It's probably some cognac. Um, it is from Spain, mm. and I thought, uh, you know, we might crack it open. That's why we have a second glass. Nice, okay. So, Good to know. nice nice thing to drink here. Um, and that's from 2010? Yes, it is, sir. Damn. Yes, it is, 2010. Oh, okay. um, shout out to Dallas Fine Wines. I love that shop going in there. The guys are great. Normally, if you go in wine shops, you're only going to find new stuff. The bottles are going to be 2019, 2018. They're all going to be new vintages. Um, Dallas Fine Wines is great about having older vintages. So I was able to get a 2015. I also asked them how many bottles of these they have in case anybody wants to go try them. And they said they had some, about a case of each. Oh, so they've got... Oh. Yeah, so if you want some, you can swing by. And they're so awesome. They'll totally order you more. So they're just great guys there. They'll, They'll bend over backwards for you. They're awesome. Nice. Yeah, and the last time you were on, we posted a link to them uh, in the chat. We'll track that down. It's in that uh, uh, in this one as well. And they're knowledgeable, so if you don't know, that's something great to have with a local shop that you go to is to know, get to know the people that are in there. Same thing when you go in and get bourbon, you know, um, and the shops like that. You get to know the people who work there, and they can start pointing you in the direction. You know, say, same, just like cigar companies. Yeah, absolutely. Same thing. Um, and Dallas Fine Wine have great people there that will help you. So Perfect. they're really awesome, and they'll greet you when you come in. They're cool dudes. Yeah. Well, I'm really enjoying this one. This is nice. Absolutely. Drinks very easy. It does. Probably like that two dollar bottle. Same thing, right? No, no, definitely. Not. <laughs> Well, you know, and, and and I drink mostly Merlots, and uh, so uh, uh, I'm 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 trying to expand out of that and do more cabs and that type of thing. Uh, but that's just been my go-to for so many years. It's kind of hard to break that that cycle. Sure, sure. You get your regular. Get my get get my regular. I was I'm used to. when I was talking to uh, Busy. I said, "Well, let me guess." When you want to grab a bottle of wine to take home, maybe for your for your wife, you know, you probably get a Prosecco. A little Marco mm-hmm. Prosecco is a pretty popular one. Or Mayomi Pinot Noir. His little ears perked up. He was like, uh, yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> Those are, that's what I'm grabbing. Very popular. Um... But one of the things when you look at those wines, and sadly, I have to crap on LaMarco Prosecco. They have raised their prices since they first came out. They could become very popular. You've got to yeah. pay for the advertising, the commercials, right? Mm. You can get better stuff at a cheaper price. Yeah, so look around outside of your normal grab. Mayomi, too, has went up in price. There's some other great Pinot Noirs. You know, you can get cheaper price. Look not at the eyesight shelves. Look a little lower. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The easy ones, you know. Stretch your back out a little bit. Reach a little lower. <laughs> Go to that bottom shelf, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. 
the off countries and stuff. Look outside of it. So what uh, other uh, little hacks did you get busy? Um, let's see. What's another hack? You got the uh, alcohol percentage hack. The outside of the norm. So don't gravitate just to California, Oregon. The ones that you're going to see in the center of the stores normally, where most of the wines are, go outside of that. Go to Greece. Go to maybe Spain, where a lot of people don't typically grab from. Tempranillos are a great bottle. They're good prices. Um, I did tell Busy about South African wines. Mm -hmm. Great hack. I think I mentioned that last time. South African wines used to be the hotness about mm -hmm. four years ago. And all the magazines, everybody's talking about, go get South African wines. They're great. In uh, African uh, Africa's culture, they started fighting, and they started having wars and blowing stuff up, and, ex and exports stopped for South Africa. The wines kept being made, but they couldn't get them out. So the fad went down. People stopped talking about South African wines, and once the exports opened back up, the fad was gone. The quality of wines were still there. They weren't selling like they were when the fad. They had to lower the prices, but the quality is still the other price. So you can now get a South African wine that probably before was $50, $20, $30 now. Much lower price. And since they couldn't ship it out, you probably have some aged wine. Sure, too. yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a great thing to look at, um, you know, and there's a lot of factors with wine like that you don't think about. You know, export and turmoil in the different countries and stuff. Um, Lebanon wine is a great one. Um, to go to Chateau Moussard is one of my favorite producers out of there. Great stuff. Um, you can get uh, their second label for, I think, around $20, which is really great. Nice, yeah. Their higher label, you're going to be looking more 60 to $75 range. And a lot of those labels, you can ask the person, hey, if you see an expensive label and you don't want to spend, you know, $80 for that, Ask the person who works there, say, hey, do they have any secondary labels of their wine? And normally they'll have opener bottles that they release, that producer. And it's kind of like, you know, the candy to the kid. They're trying to get you into their wines at the $20, $25 range, but their other wines are selling $80, $100. You can get that great quality at a cheaper price. And see, and Sean didn't even know the Lebanon produced <clears throat> wine. I didn't either. Oh, Chateau Moussard, great stuff. M-U-S-A-R, Lebanon. And there's a handful usually of a Lebanon section. You know, really go outside of the range in other countries in the wine store. They're going to be a much smaller production. But, man, the qualities are normally great. I love grabbing smaller countries' wines. You can get them for 20 bucks. Well, sometimes speaking, under. They're great. Speaking of smaller countries. <laughs> You're going to say just smaller. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where you were going to go with that. <laughs> I'm sorry. What were you going to say? <laughs> what do you recommend for Texas wines? <clears throat> uh, I think it's called or anything. Uh, Breckham or Brecker. That's the main one that I like. Texas, I love you, <clears throat> but your uh, weather is not great for making wine. So if you get Texas wine... Um, it is a shorter growing season. You're quite hot here, so it is a shorter growing season, so they are going to be lighter bodied wines. Just that means if you go and get a Texas wine that's a Cabernet Sauvignon, do not expect that to drink like a California Cabernet Sauvignon. It's going to be lighter body, closer to a Pinot Noir. Um, you know, I've had some great Texas wines. Just don't expect them to be that body. They don't have the growing season for the skin contact. To be able to build up those tannins and the structure, right. it's just not there with the growing season. Um, now, don't get me wrong. You very may well buy some Texas wines and go, oh, she was totally wrong. This tastes just like a California wine. Reel it back there, buddy. And <laughs> ask the producer where those grapes came from. A lot of people source grapes. What that means to source grapes is they buy other people's grapes. So they will buy grapes from California's that they're not using and they will use it. A lot of times people will do this if they don't own their own vines, mm -hmm. maybe here in Texas. They're producing it here in Texas. They're getting the grapes, they're adding the yeast, they're mixing it here, but the actual produce comes from California or Oregon. And that's that overflow. You know, they have these huge fields, they can't make up all the grapes, they sell that stuff off. Um, so definitely you could probably get stuff well, you know, that's I, made uh, here that's grown somewhere uh, else. There's I mentioned Rick. the last He's time. late. He says hi. Uh, I mentioned the last hi, time you were here that uh, 
uh, I used to do computer work for Keepersall. And uh, Keepersall what? what? Keepersall Estates mm -hmm. uh, out of Bullard, but they were a South African owned company. But they grew, had their own little vineyard there in Bullard, Texas. And, and Where's Bullard, Texas? Uh, it's near Bullard? Tyler. It's a, Tyler! Yes, it's a I know of Tyler. Tyler. It's a suburb of Tyler. Eric Hall just did a golf tournament in Tyler, Texas for Wounded Warriors. At the same time that we did Hackfest. They're, they're just trying to piggyback on our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I just how, know where Tyler is. Two hours yep, away. I asked well, how far is I it? That's where I was born and raised. Really? Yes. Is there a lot going out in Tyler? A lot no. of stuff going on? No. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so go this way. Right there. Oh! <laughs> that's why I'm here in Dallas. Yeah. That's why I'm here in Dallas. <laughs> I love East Texas to visit, but I don't want to live there anymore. So, uh, but yeah, you've got Tyler, and then you've got where I grew up, which is Flint, which is a little suburb of Tyler, and then you go a little further south, and you got Bullard. You're talking too much, let it go out, huh? Yes, I think drinking too much. Drinking too much. I drank my whole glass, oh, no, 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 had to no, refill. No, that, that's 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 not that's a, not a, that's that's not not a possibility. Yeah. That's not a valid statement. <laughs> So let's see. Rick finally made it in. Said he's sorry it was late. Sean said uh, he thinks that a lot of them do that for their tastings because what he brings Sean. home is not the same mm. from what he tasted at the at the well, tasting. Well, let me ask you this, Becker. Sean. Becker, I was right. Becker Vineyards, yes. Uh, cool Sean, labels. are you opening the bottle and letting it sit for a while, or are you doing like me and you just pop the cork and down the bottle? That may have a little bit to do with it. At the uh, tastings, they may have those bottles sitting out for a while, getting some air, and you're drinking one that's been sitting an hour or two. Well, de depending on how busy that winery is that you're tasting at, you may be drinking a bottle that's been open a day or two. Yeah. It's right. probably more of, of what's going on there. Um, so that's probably why it tastes a little different. Honestly, whatever you're bringing home is probably the freshest it's going to get. A lot of times you go to some tasting rooms, if, you're not, if it's not a high volume, some of those bottles have been open a day or two. Um, it's, At least. It's just, it is what it is. And yeah. usually the person who's doing the tasting room, they're not tasting those bottles to make sure, you know, every time they come in on their shift that it's still good. So, you know, possibly you're getting a little vinegar in your wine. <laughs> it's just, it is what it is. As wine, you know, time goes on, your wine turns to vinegar. Um, so that's just, it is what it is. Cool, cool, cool. So what was... So, what was your favorite hole that you got to play mm -hmm. uh, Monday at Hackfest? It was the baseball bat hole. The baseball bat hole. That was a fun hole. And it was fun because we got up to it. There was a short lady bat and there was a long bat. Now, I will say it was messed up because the lady bat wasn't at the lady hole. Like where the ladies <laughs> tee off. So yep. if you wanted to use it, you would have to get the bat and then golf cart over to where you have to let it go. By that point, we were too lazy. We we're just like not moving. But um, I tried to hit the ball. Preston tried to hit the ball. Pat tried to hit the ball. It hit a tree. It went off, you know, mm -hmm. far left. And then our fourth team player, Thomas from our Dallas office, he had the little bat. He popped the ball up. It went tink. And it went so far. He sailed it. And I looked at him. I was like, oh my gosh, how did you just do that? He goes, oh yeah, well, I played baseball in college. <laughs> we got a ringer. That's it. There you <laughs> go. That's it. It was awesome. It was a good surprise. Who was you with? Who, who was that? Uh, Mike? Thomas. Thomas? Okay. Thomas does not really smoke cigars. He's here in our Dallas office. And we invited him out to be part of the team because he normally plays golf. He's a golf player. Never been in a tournament before. It's his first tournament. And Preston thought, oh, great. So I'm going to bring Thomas in. He doesn't really smoke cigars. I'm going to get all of his cigars. And Thomas smoked every single one of those sticks. Mm -hmm. He was lighting them up and smoking them. He was drinking. He was laughing. Oh, having a fantastic awesome. time. He that was so awesome. happy. He got so introduced to ICC crew. He was like, everybody's so nice. So he's definitely so in for next year? He's oh, like, he, oh. he was already like... <laughs> Count me in. I'm in for again next year. He came over to the after party, yeah. and he loved it. He was just like, I can't believe there's this kind of community, you know, because if you aren't familiar with cigar smoking, if you're not familiar on 
how that family works. Right. It really is all over the world. And we say that all the time because oh, we yeah. travel. Anywhere you go, if you're a cigar smoker and you go in a lounge, you're going to make a friend. Yep. You know, they're friendly. You're normally going to have uh, similar topics to talk about. You're there to relax, sit back, and enjoy. And, you know, you just make friends everywhere. So he kind of got a taste of that community, the cigar community. He didn't well, that's know all about. It, and I'll tell you what, that's all it took for me. And I was hooked. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, when I first started, and I told this story, uh, I guess like maybe last week, but I started out smoking a, a pipe uh, on a whim, but I went back into, the, I bought the pipe and the tobacco and, all, and the little tool and everything, got showed how to use it, mm -hmm. and then went back into their lounge, and within 10 minutes, I'm chatting with everybody, we're watching, watching the game, they're sharing their booze, we're having a great time, and we closed the place down, and then, you know, I'm like, this is where I need to be on mm -hmm. a regular basis. Well, um, you know, it's I was gone a few hours later, Sean. <laughs> yeah. So that was a fun hole. Um, I got a couple of pictures of people at the duty hole, yep. having to put around the mini uh, baby Ruth bars and, and trying to get in the seat. toilet seat. That was a tough hole. Yeah. That was uh, tough. Especially later in the day because the, Mini uh, bars actually got a little melty. Oh, oh yeah, and a little sticky. They so the, the ball, ball didn't it, ding it off of it. Yeah. It stuck. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, funny. That yeah. Is funny. Unlike last year when it was much colder, mm -hmm. they didn't they didn't uh, tend to melt. Um, well, I got a I got a couple of good shots of Rhonda and uh, Vicky using uh, Brandon Byers. Uh, prosthetic leg. I saw those sinking, pictures. And, yeah. and sinking their, their balls. I, 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 I never got around to that hole to get pictures of people. I was trying to get around to a couple of the holes that I wanted to get pictures. A couple of the cool holes that I knew yeah. would be great pictures. Mm -hmm. The gopher hole, I got uh, some of that. I got around to the uh, AR-15 golf ball launcher hole. Mm, I got, that was a definitely got one. some pictures now, of that. Now, funny thing about that, I got a picture of Rhonda firing that off. Yeah, she had never even held a gun before. Really, nice. really. And she I heard the loved same thing it. with Megan. She loved Megan. It. Oh yeah, Megan. Meg. <laughs> yeah, the wife of a veteran. Oh, she was. She was. <laughs> she flagged both me and Kathleen, and we were like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on, hold on." Um, yeah, I thought I was gonna get a golf ball through my chest, not into my chest, through my chest, because she was close enough that it would have gone through me. Oh, so. that, that, that thing was launching like. Gangbusters. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was going 300 yards. I was excited to see uh, Susan and Amy at their hole in yep. quarter. Yep. Yeah, that was a, you know, that was a lot of fun. Again, yeah. just so many people. Like, and not only like you guys, there was other people that had people come in from out of town. Yeah, I heard or, New York and California. Or from their work, yeah, that came in and did it. Um, I even sent some pictures to some guys at work that I know play golf that are out in North Carolina, and they're like, oh. I'm in for next year. I was like, what? Like, yeah, can I sign up now? I was like, well, not yet. I mean, um, so yeah, so. Well, you know, I was a spectator last year because you right. said, come on out and just hang out. Yeah. I show up, never been on a golf course before. It already had started. So I'm standing there and I don't see anybody. I'm like, I don't even know what's going on. You swung by. I was like, I'll come swing back by and get you. You had to drop off somebody for photography. Yep. And then Sean... And his crew rolled up, Stranger Danger, three guys I don't even know were like, hey, hop in, our fourth didn't show up. I'm like, I don't know you people. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, well, if you're associated with ICC, you're probably cool. Okay, fine, I'll hop in. <laughs> so um, I got to go around Oh, don't let her course. play. She would have jumped in anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we went around. I got to tag along with him. And I remember telling Preston after that, oh, my gosh, I want to do it next year. So apparently you don't need any golf skills to do this golfing. No. You know, no. it back, was. <laughs> in fact, Vicky and Rhonda last year the showed up. first time. Up. The first time last year, mm -hmm. and they ran. I don't know where they bought them, but they bought a set of golf clubs. I heard they left their plastic on. Uh, the, they didn't even know there was plastic on it, and they had never <laughs> even used it. So we get out there. You know, on the face this, covers, you know, it's got a little bit of that film on that you got to. Oh, I know off, my yeah. my so, clothes are brand new too. <laughs> and, and, and so we were pulling the plastic off while we were as they were using the clubs, and they were having a blast. Oh my so they gosh. definitely signed up again for this year. Yeah. I saw um, Brandon Frakes. Uh, video of him catching some air with his golf cart oh well i, I hear that uh pat was a little scared to ride with you he was yesterday sissy. and those golf carts 
did not go that fast. They did not. He's well, holding on for dear life quick. thinking that I was going to just wreck it. Oh, please, please let me drive. Please let me drive. Just pull over. Let me drive. <laughs> like, sit there and shut up. I'm the one driving. I didn't driving. even get to see Pat out there. I, uh, oh, you didn't? No, I didn't. But yeah, I didn't see Hard a lot of people him. out there. He's tall. I uh, know. Uh, well, see, and I didn't even see Edgar until we got back to the shop. Oh, really? I saw Edgar as he drove past. I said, uh, oh, does he have the alcohol this year? Like that. Uh, yeah. And they so, go, no, he has cigars. Well, I didn't get those either. Edgar. <laughs> I, I made the front nine... Two two revolutions and the back nine one revolution and then they started tearing down. Mm. Um, but granted, I say it wasn't like I was just driving straight. I would stop. Well, and the also, holes, get it wasn't like we had seen drink. hadn't seen the entire eighteen holes of that right. course. Oh, yeah, a couple sure. of times. Chris and I were there at five, and uh, uh, Andrew were there at five thirty in the morning. Morning of after being there Sunday evening setting stuff up. And so, needless to say, by 7, 15, 8 o'clock, I was a little tired of the course. <laughs> what was the name of the guy that, that does long shots? Oh, I can't remember. Mike? Mike. It was Mike? Mike, Mike something. It was Mike. We went to him. He had an injured finger. It was all taped up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike. And you, you donated, and then if you donated, he would sail the ball for you. And he was like, well, I have an injured finger, so you're just going to have to shoot for my best shot. I said, oh, we're not going to see you hit the ball. He goes, no, I'm still going to hit it. We're like, all right, we're expecting the worst. He's built it up that he injured his finger. He hits it. I don't even see where it goes. <laughs> it goes so far. It sails. I mean, that's on injury. I can't imagine what that guy does at full health. So, well, I'll tell you what. And if there's two people on the golf course that you want to hit your ball for you, mm. it's Andrew Frakes and Mike. I yeah. heard Andrew was sailing. Oh, my, Andrew! I've never seen one. him play. So it's, it scared me a little bit because I was I was there talking to him. I said, "Oh yeah." I said, "Are you hitting it off off people's?" Uh, uh, he's like, "No, I would <laughs> never do that." You did and that so, last year. Yeah. Oh, and my so God. I told him about the guy who was the long long ball hitter last year mm -hmm. that did that, and he's like. No. He goes, you should never, ever do that. And he no. goes, I can't believe you guys trusted that guy. And I was like, okay, so this is one of those moments that I'm glad I can say I can't believe I did that versus I wish I had done that. But I mean, I'm just I glad still that I survived that. it. Oh, yeah. my gosh. You're lucky you survived it. Literally, <laughs> so people who don't know, Chris laid down flat on the course, put the tee between his teeth and the ball there, and let the long drive guy Wail it! Well, no, let, and no, he not survived. the long, the the long uh, hit guy. It was, it was Andrew Frakes. No, it wasn't Andrew. It was Andrew. a long it hit guy. Andrew. It was a it was the long long yeah. hit guy. Oh, okay. It yeah, was a long drive guy. Yeah. Sailed it, and there's pictures and stuff of it. Oh, yeah. and that's oh, probably yeah. video. Oh, there's yeah. a video. I mean, he hit it perfectly. But, yeah. Oh, oh. If I had balls, they would have went right up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, no, it's a it's a it's a again. I know we've talked about it. It's a great event. Um, well, I mean, what event does ICC put on that isn't a winner? I know. They're all awesome. And they've got Halloween, and, Christmas, and Black Friday. Say, and, now, and now that this is over, they're starting to plan for Halloween. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, well they've got another event next Wednesday. Who's coming in next Wednesday? There's another um, Master Blender Cigar Company owner is coming in next Wednesday that we're going to do our show from there. Because it's a... Uh, who is it? I, I, I don't remember. But it's yeah, it's a Wednesday night thing. Um, but anyway, and then yeah, Halloween. I mean, I've had my costume in for a couple of weeks now, and had it in long enough that I thought, oh, maybe I get a second costume and come as two different people on Halloween. <laughs> well, I think uh, this last Christmas, Brandon, I think it was, changed outfits. He was wearing one thing in the beginning, and all of a sudden he came out wearing something totally different. So you totally could pull it off. You could do a little switcheroo. There. They're total opposite characters, though. So, but it would be kind of cool because then it'd be like, "Wait a minute, weren't you just?" <laughs> yeah. So. But yeah, well, your costume last year would have been a pain to swap out on. Oh yeah, yeah. I, and I've 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 stayed away from masks because it's hard to smoke and it gets hot with masks. So yeah, I've I've stayed this year. I've stayed away from masks. Um, yeah. trick from foil. You don't have to cut it. You know how many times I slice my finger working in restaurants for years and years? Just pull it off. And then you go straight to the court. Little, <laughs> little hack. 
majority, I would say 90 to 95% of bottles you can do that with. Most of them, you know, what happens in the bottling line is they just, they drop the cap on and it squeezes on. Right. So it's not like it's shrink wrapped. It can pop right back off. Hey, Rhonda. There's Rhonda. Rhonda hey, Rhonda. It's good to see you, baby. Hey, Rhonda. You were just talking now, about you, Rhonda. Uh, now, see, what I do is I Rhonda, what was your favorite right hole here, at mm -hmm. the, uh, and run around the, this rim and then pull it off. That way, I don't, that way I don't cut. Now, now yeah. let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite kind of corkscrew? Not this. Not the winger. You don't no. like my wings? The winger's the worst one. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> I do um, a waiter wine opener. It's a... Uh, it, you pop it open. This comes out. You screw it in. And then it caps on. It's, it's called a waiter yeah, waiter yeah. tool. Yeah. That's my favorite one. Yeah. Double hinge. I think I think I've got one of those uh, at the shop. Yeah, double hinge is my favorite. Not not this one. And it's got a little blade on it. Because I could have had it open already with the other one. <laughs> this one you gotta like really work at. <laughs> and then you're like, uh, <laughs> the arms are going up. All right, Rhonda, tell us what was your favorite hole uh, at Hackfest. And don't say me. Whoa. Oh, it broke. It broke. And that's why you don't like the wingers? That's one of them. <laughs> Does it, is it because of that? Is it the type of corkscrew you use or is it just... No, the cork has gotten dry. So honestly, what probably happened with this is at the wine shop, since the dessert wines don't sell that much, it's been standing and it's been up. it's standing up and so it dried So up. the cork has gotten dry, which also probably means air well, has gotten I'll in, got what. a little oxidized, but... Now let's, let's talk about this. Okay. What is the best way to store your wine? On its side. On its you side. want to keep the cork wet. You do not want to keep corks wet if it's cognac or bourbon or higher proof. It'll eat through the cork. That's something you keep standing up. But wines are lower proof sideways. Don't leave them in your car. Don't leave them out in, in snow, extreme weathers. Um, you want to keep it kind of at the same temperature you want to keep yourself. I always say treat wine bottles like a baby. Don't leave them out in your car with the windows up. You know, don't leave them in a bad temperature environment. Leave them wherever your body's comfortable in temperature, and it's a pretty safe bet. So now when it breaks like that, what's the best method to try to get it out? Do you just push it all the way in, or? No, I'm going to see if I can finagle get, it. Get hold of it? Yeah, which is tough because since it's winged, I can only make the corkscrew go down so much. Right. Yeah. So, I'm going to see if I can. So, Rhonda says her favorite, uh, uh, the Brandon leg mm -hmm. uh, putting. And then Rick says, turn the bottle upside down and whack it with the sole of your shoe. Yeah, you don't want to do that when it's like this much cork in because then you're going to lose all the wine too. Yeah. So, no. If it had if it had done it more than halfway, broken at that point, maybe. It's gonna go down. It's too. It's crumbling. Oh, too hold much. on, hold on. Mm. It's gonna go down. Yeah. I don't think that's gonna help. Well, it's gonna go down. It is what it is. I know I say that a lot. And it's not the end of the world. So, you did something uh, that I don't normally do with my wine. Mm -hmm. When you poured that in the decanter, you actually filtered it. Yes. How often and what should you look for to decide whether you want to filter one or not? If it's or older, filter... if it's a uh, full body, like a Cabernet or Bordeaux, they usually have um, tartrates or sediment in it. Okay. Um, so, you want to filter it. <laughs> when... <laughs> Sean said, see a screw top bottle of wine would never do that no and 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 people hate on screw caps but they're fantastic closures don't think that they always mean it's a cheap bottle the only thing it means is that that wine's never going to age and or it's always going to stay fresh in order for a wine to age you have to have breathing which is from a cork because they contract and expand and that's what helps the wine age if it's a screw cap it just means you're always going to have a fresh bottle of wine when you crack it open 
So if it's 20 years old, it's still just a fresh bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. It's not going to age at all. Yeah. And probably the worst cork to use is a synthetic cork is the worst because they typically end up letting in air because they can't expand, right? They're not, it is, it's just like a plastic plug. Or wine in a box or bag. <laughs> That's what I told him. Bag it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just stick a straw in it. Yeah. Let's see how well. Well, if you stick a straw in it, you can blow bubbles and help aerate it. Yeah. Is that not how that works? Yeah. Awesome. I get some cork in my wine. Now I'm gonna say this. So there's a wine producer out of California. God rest his soul. He has passed away um, during COVID time. It smells sweet. But it is. His name's Jim Clinton. He makes Albon Clamont wines. I loved that dude. He was such an awesome guy. I remember being at one of his wine tastings dinners. All these bottles out, right? I'm over there like trying to be real careful with the corks and take them out and hold and everything. He goes, ah, screw it. If it breaks, just shove it down with your finger. It's fine. I, this is his wines. Yeah. And I'm going, but, but there's going to be cork in the glass. He goes, they got fingers. They could pick it out. This is a room full of like millionaires drinking his wines. And this winemaker was like, ah, they can stick their finger in and pick it out. It's no big deal. So that's from the actual winemaker. So it's not a big deal. Pick it out with your finger. Just don't, you know, chew well, on it. Well, and it actually, it's actually, as I roll it around my glass, It'll the cork stick is the sticking to the side and I'm able to easily kind of pick it out. At least not the big, a big pieces. Deal. Yeah. yeah. This is going to and be I mean, sweeter. I eat dirt as a kid, so a little bit of cork's not gonna hurt me. Yeah, it's fine. It's My immune deal. system is great. No hey Ray, how are you doing tonight, man? Ray? Good to see you. Ray, Ray, Ray Ray Kane. Blue Ray? No. Different no. Ray. Hi, different no, CD Ray. Ray. C D Ray. Not blue Ray. <laughs> Absolutely. And when are y'all coming down to Dallas, man? We need to get together. Oh. That's soft. It's soft? And it is sweet, but it's good. Yeah. We're going to drink the whole bottle of that. Or I'm going to drink the whole bottle of that. <laughs> Your out. eyes are like oh. <laughs> glistening right now with that. <laughs> oh, that one is... I'll, I'll drink. Give me the cork. I'll drink the cork. <laughs> mm. Like that? And, I've all, and, I'm oh, down and it water. doesn't taste like high alcohol, does it? It does. It'll get and you in right, trouble. I'm down to one Ron left. So uh, I'm definitely gonna have to start tracking down some more uh, cigar clowns. Cigar clowns? clowns? I know yes. about cigar clowns. Yes. yes, I have recently discovered them and I want a sticker but I couldn't find any stickers. Can you uh, make Ray, this happen? Ray, uh, mm. send us some stickers and uh, we'll make sure that Maggie mm. gets one. And I want you on the show so that you can sign our uh, back here and put a cigar clown sticker up here. Yeah, I like it. They made some dope stickers. Oh, that clown looks so dirty. <laughs> like, he looks like he's seen some stuff, you know? <laughs> right. And he has like a cigar in his mouth. Like they got such good graphics. I was like, man, I want that dirty clown on my cigar case at home. <laughs> yeah, he said drop into his DMs, so, you know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, I'm taking my man's off camera. Watch out. Watch out. <laughs> No, that one, this one, I, both of them are really good, but this one, I like those sweetness. It's, now, it's sweet, but it's not too sweet. Now, Ray, it's have nice you sent no, samples? Have you sent samples to an industrial cigar company yet? You, if 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 you want to get in down here, send some samples to an industrial cigar company. They love the Ron, and I'm sure that they would love to pick up some more stuff. So uh, send them some samples, but they are tough. Uh, it's got to be unanimous, uh, anonymous of the four guys. Uh, before they bring them in, but if uh, you make it, you'll be in like bank. I mean, you, in fact, you'll be you'll be going. I don't have that many cigars. Mm -hmm. I don't have that many cigars. We will send you what we got. It has a short finish. It doesn't linger really long. It has that sweetness off the front, and then it just kind of diminishes. It has a good flavor to it, and it does not taste. Like 16% alcohol. Mm -mm. And that's the dangerous part. That is the dangerous part. That is true. <laughs> Ports and stuff. I mean, it is. My, my glass had a hole in it, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get some more. <laughs> he likes it. <laughs> and, and Ray, uh, I'll, I'll DM you later. 
I want to do a cigar, cl another cigar clown uh, company spotlight and get together with y'all and talk more about you guys and uh, make sure we do uh, uh, do the company proper. They really do. They do good on those dirty clowns. 16%. Sounds good, yeah. Ray. I love this job. 16% Spanish wine. That's good. This says, uh, absolutely dulce, so it's probably like a late harvest. Mm. Um, you know, they leave more sugar in it, just like pork and stuff. You know, I said when you have a fortified wine, when you're making this kind of wine, you're making it and you're putting yeast in it. And, and I describe it as you add the yeast in, or if you're all natural and you're, you know, you love the moon and the stars, and you use wild yeast that's already on there, um, it's different. So you either add or use wild yeast, but they go in and they go num 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 num. All the yeast eat up all the sugar, sugar, yeah, and they poop out the alcohol. It is how yeast works. So that's how this works. The yeast is eating up all the sugar and pooped out the alcohol, and that's how you get wine. With this wine that is higher alcohol, just like port and stuff, you put the yeast in and you're doing the same thing. You're going num 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 eating up the the sugar and pooping out the alcohol but you stop it halfway in its meal basically so all the sugar there's still a lot of sugar in it to get the higher alcohol and to kill the yeast off you add booze in so that's how you get a higher alcohol and still the sweetness with it okay. and you said that yeah. was probably sherry that was added to that one um sherry cognac grappa um i would have to look into see which this one specifically added in. But that's the kind know. of thing that normally gets thrown into it. Uh, Hi, Al, if it have you ever had grappa before? I have yes. not. Oh, it's like gasoline. It It'll is. get you. It is. Those Italians, they don't mess around. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and, and Goober over here doesn't mess around either because you, mm -hmm. you heard about his mixture, didn't you? Yes, the Everclear. So on the 13th hole, they had the Wheel of Death. And I didn't Sunday, play that game right. Sunday night, they asked... They looked around the lounge. They were looking for a bad bottle of liquor. There was nothing bad in the lounge. So Andrew says, you got a lot of liquor at the house. Do you have any bad? I said, I'm sure I got some pretty not so great bottles or some bad bottles at the house. You had Everclear at your house? Let me go home and see what I have. So I went home. I had, I had a quarter of a bottle of 151 and a full bottle of 151. All right. I had a three quarters bottle of Everclear. Uh, and then a whole bunch of other just quarter bottles here, of this and that. But I, I didn't want people to know that it was Everclear with 151. So I mixed the Everclear and the 151 and a little bit of Jack Daniels Fire, which is yeah, cinnamon, yeah, yeah. into a Southern Comfort bottle. So they thought, oh, Southern Comfort, not bad. I'll take the shot. Of, if they got the wrong one, they had to choose something to drink. I'll take the Southern Comfort. No, the lady there told everyone <laughs> they're all mixed bottles. <laughs> no, you're not supposed to tell them that. Oh, she did. <laughs> well, not everybody because there's one guy that just said, oh, I'll have the Southern Comfort. Took a shot. They got to the next hole and he couldn't stand up at the That's tee what box. Pop said. Yeah, to tee off. So he's like, what was in that? Yeah. So. No, I didn't do that hole right because I went up and spun the wheel. Want a cigar, which I don't know where that went. There's no cigars there, but it says I want a cigar. And then I, I was thirsty. I wanted some alcohol, and there were three bottles standing there. So I was like, oh, great, and we also get something to drink. And she said, well, these are all garbage bottles. They're all mixed. And I, and I said, I said, eh, give me the dark brown one anyways. I'm thirsty. And she poured it, and I said, eh, it's not terrible. And then Preston came up, and he was like, oh, is there something here to drink? I go, yeah, honey, just get the dark brown one. It's all right. And he gets it, sips, and he goes, oh, that's garbage. It tastes <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and I'm over here going, eh, hey, not too bad, you know, and I drink the whole thing. Then I realize that that's if you, like, lost the wheel turn. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I didn't lose the wheel turn. We you still drank won. it. <laughs> you were just, you know, you just wanted something to drink. So. Yeah, I was like a little something to wet my lips, you know. Yeah, Sean says the one on the right wasn't bad if you That's mix a small bottle of fire, Fireball with it. Who, where was the small bottle of Fireballs? I saw pictures of these. How come I didn't get any in my Christmas I think stocking? It, I, no, I think it was the cart girl driving around. You could um, buy stuff. Yeah. Because she was selling drinks and alcohol. Oh, even I got we Dos Equis from them. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't fully understand the drink cart lady. 
I know she has alcohol in it. I don't, I, it's not like a menu. I don't know what she's holding on to. So I don't want to ask too many questions when she comes by. I just go, I'll just take a beer. Yeah, so she, I don't know what else she has besides beer. She had beer, beer and, <laughs> and she had alcohol, small bottles of a little bit of anything you wanted. Oh, really? Yeah, Do they Gatorade. normally have that? Yeah, most golf, courts, golf courses, they do that. Yeah. Now, absolutely. the big thing was, I mean, for us, it wasn't really relevant, except for we didn't have any beer vendors, so mm -hmm. people that wanted beer went ahead and paid for it. Yeah, I but had a had couple enough, beers because I was getting hot. You had enough beer. alcohol on the different holes that, you know, every third hole there was, here, here, have some alcohol. Well, see, so. I felt like at certain ports I was getting a little dehydrated, and I thought, a beer will fix that because it's you cold and refreshing. You should know I felt refreshed that. after I drank it. My so it worked. My my big problem was is that I didn't eat anything all day until mm. the aftermath party around four o'clock. I had half a piece of pizza and I could only eat half because at that point I only had two bottles of water and two Gatorades and a whole bunch of alcohol. A good bit of alcohol that my body was just like I I can't take any food right now. And I once I sat down and stopped moving, I had a massive headache and I didn't mm. want to do anything else. And uh, I I called it a night around five thirty six and had to head home and shower up and take and go to bed. It was yeah. But then yesterday was fine. But I kept thinking yesterday was Monday. Oh, you did. And I keep thinking today is Tuesday. The only reason I know it's not Tuesday is I'm here doing the show and I know the show's on Wednesday. <laughs> but Sunday for whatever reason or Monday was like a Sunday it. for me. So yeah. And then I have another long weekend coming up Monday. What are you doing? Monday is, uh, what, Columbus Day or Indigenous Peoples Day or whatever. So it's another holiday for me. Never affects me anymore. I, 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 I work at a bank, so. There get, you go. So, I wonder if I got that day off. I'll check. So I got another long weekend coming up this weekend. So, yeah, my, my days are going to be all screwed up. Mm. I'll think next Tuesday's like Wednesday or Thursday or something stupid. I, don't think I can't wait to play golf again. I feel like last year when we did it, I didn't realize a golf Cart girl, the drink cart girl was a thing. So me be a big dummy. Sean knows this story. We're we're playing like maybe the third hole in on me being part of their little crew. And this lady comes by and oh, do you guys want anything to drink? You know, I go, oh my gosh, ICC even thought of this. <laughs> they got this cart drink lady to go around and give you refreshments. And they all looked at me like I was crazy. I was like, no, that's just like they're here all the time. I said, wait a minute. You play golf, and there's always a drink cart lady going oh, around? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they said, oh, yeah. yeah. And I said, no wonder guys always take <laughs> off work to go play That's golf. Right. Yeah. That's right. I didn't know this was normal. So now, like, now I know that even if you're not in a tournament, I can go play and golf and still drink alcohol that usually, they bring to me. It's usually right. young college you girls, too. And Preston just, said I can smoke a cigar. You can yeah. smoke a cigar and ride around in the car, and you don't even have to pick a club up. I mean, this sounds great. I, we're playing golf of, when we go back. I've already told him. And, it of course, uh, my cousin Rick says every day is a weekend for me. You know, he's retired, so he goes mm. and plays golf every day. Oh, you're one of those dudes. Yeah, he's one of those dudes. He's a tie. <laughs> he's a tie. He and Ty and Jackie would get along really well. Ty didn't do jack. He, he drove, just, around, he drove, he around, drove around with pops. And, yeah, yeah, and just made commentary. I thought he was going to play. He didn't no, just diddly squat. No. He never does anything. So, he, so here's the thing. <laughs> Ty's always there, but Ty never does anything. He he's always nothing. there to participate, but he's not. Pops did something. He played. Yeah, I Pop saw would he, play a couple holes really and good everything. Too. Oh, yeah. But Ty, now, one of the holes early on, it was, I mean, they had, maybe they were on the second tee. Ty's there, of course. Their cart. He's got the music turned up, and there's a guy out in his out in his yard in his pajamas. Hey, turn the music down. The music's too loud. You're on a damn public golf course. You That's think, what I say when you know, I hit the houses. You know, with I balls. mean, come on. Uh, go back. Go back in your. Go back in your house and go to bed. It, you're on a public golf course. I mean, first of all, you're you're hazardous standing outside. Yeah. So. Because you could get dinged. The golf ball. It was Absolutely. a good thing that that was not the hole that had the golf ball launcher because he'd have been really pissed. Oh, yeah, with that gun going off? Yeah. I heard it's loud. It wasn't too loud. It wasn't that bad. No. And the <laughs> kickback on it's non existent on an AR 15. What was, what, it was funny, and they talked about this last night, Pops did, and Anton, right? Uh, right. Zeke's barber was there, and he went to go fire off. The, the golf ball launcher, right? Now, yeah. 
Anton's a nice guy and everything, but you figure he's been around a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, he did say this, yeah. But yeah. he had not fired an AR-15 before. And he, it freaked him out a little bit. <laughs> How loud it was and everything. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that was, that was, a, that was a good story. But, um, a lot of fun on Monday. Um, can't wait. I already can't wait till next year. Only 362 more days left. I can't wait to do it again. So, and this time I'll be playing golf in between because I got clubs and stuff. And... <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, Ron and I are thinking about sponsoring a hole. Oh, that's year. exciting! Yeah, next tells from the lounge. Uh, you know, SSW a sponsored a hole this year. Oh, yeah. it was it was great. I, they had, had the line of booze. They had they had anything and everything. If you hadn't yeah. tried, there were a couple that I hadn't tried, and uh, they were like, "Here, go ahead and try this and try as that." As soon as I went up after giving Rodney a hug. I was like, hello, I see the UA, pour me up. I can't wait, because I hadn't had it, but I'd seen it online, you know, and, and the line SSW made and everything. I was like, yes, give me a taste of that. Hey, don't was forget, guys, so like good. and share this video. Share it out to everybody. I know we're almost done here, but still. Yeah, we're an hour in already. Have Ty you... just heckled everyone. That's true, Sean, he did. He didn't. I didn't see him hit any golfing. He didn't heckle golfing. me, but that's because I was heckling him first as soon as he showed up. Yeah. Because <laughs> I know how he is. <laughs> pops, pops look like Skittles threw up on him. Oh, yeah. He's so bright. Oh, yeah. Well, he was dressed as uh, Ronnie Dangerfield. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Caddyshack. I mean, now, have you was, seen Caddyshack? It was yeah. an actual yeah. outfit. It was good. Um, it was good. Well, and honestly, uh, we say that Ty didn't do anything. I, during the tournament... I didn't really do anything. I drove around. I got some pictures. Mm -hmm. I was in character all day, mm -hmm. so I was out there, you know, looking but, for gophers. But you were part of the ambiance. There you go. You were I, part of I the like ambiance like yeah. of it. Ty was just a creeper off to the a side, creeper making, off to the side. <laughs> making commentary, and apparently what. got ma gets mad when you call him Papa Smurf. Mm. So apparently he doesn't like that nickname, which makes me honestly only want to say it more. Right, exactly. <laughs> And Lord knows I'll be using it the next time I see him. I heard, I heard Pops call him Papa Smurf, and I was like, yes, that's what I'm going to call him from now on. Yeah. All right, so both of these have gone excellent with these Byrons that we've... Oh, absolutely. The Byron that we've spoken. Um, I definitely... Didn't overpower it. I liked both of them, but definitely... I mean, this that's definitely a, a dessert wine for sure mm -hmm. all day long. But it's also a wine that I could drink all day long. Mm -hmm. And Rhonda, being a new golfer, only lost one golf ball. That's that's amazing. I lost my entire box. <laughs> I got a brand new box, and they and we and they I got they were Rhonda the color of his shirt. Year. They were bright red, so I could see where they went. Lost them all. Got one in the water. A bunch of them went in some trees. Some hit some houses. I think I, I lost uh, every single one of them. Well, you know, I, I did pretty well this year, and I didn't drop any in the water until we came across one spot, and I just said, I can't help it. And I turned around and just plopped it right into the middle of the lake. It was hilarious. <laughs> All right, so... Um, Glad y'all liked the wines. Thank the wines you for wine. coming. And thank you yeah. for coming as always. Yeah. Uh, we Definitely. really enjoy when you guys come down. You and Preston are awesome. We love you guys. Uh and I'm glad that we actually did a good show with no technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, no, it was great. Um, so uh, let's see. We, we besides we've got an event coming up next Wednesday. We won't be here. We'll be at the lounge because yep. the lounge is doing an event, and it's probably gonna be one oh, worth talking about. Worth showing off. Um, I can't remember who it is, but it's a. Uh, and we've got to rearrange uh, Jaymon. Uh, so the following the week, hopefully, Jay will be here. We've got to make it down to, uh, not Waxahachie, uh, Corsicana. No, uh, Burleson. Uh, Burleson for uh, Wild, Cigar. Wild Cigar Bar because they are um, getting ready to open. To open. What's and Wild be... Cigar Bar? Oh. It's a new cigar lounge going in in Burleson, Texas. And it's uh, that is. it's got a lot of flavor of um, you go to you industrial got, cigar. You got okay. Dallas here, you got Fort Worth here, you uh -huh. got Burleson. It's about an hour from here. Okay. Yeah. You did uh, that map in the air. I thought Fort Worth was below Dallas. No, they're straight across. They're straight oh, they across are? From each other, okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> Fort Worth is below, below below Frisco where we're at right now. Uh huh. Uh, Frisco, Plano, Dallas. Okay, yeah. so that was a good spider web that you did. But they're all there. Right. <laughs> yes. Um. So our our shameless plugs. Uh. Someone say whiskey. Yes. Uh, cigars and guns. Cigars and guns. Adrian. Adrian. I didn't see them come up, pop up uh, before us today. I don't know if they did it today or not. Uh, Lead and Leaf. Um, their their podcast. Uh, Distretto Coffee. Distretto Coffee destroyed yes. it at um, Hackfest. At Hackfest, mm-hmm. everyone loved their mm-hmm. coffee, so that was great. What I was the lots... hole that had the cream liqueur that was so good? Oh, I. I don't remember, but it was good stuff. It was... Oh, so good. Preston added it to the Distretto coffee. I was like, oh, this is so delicious. Yeah, um, we had like four shots of that cream. Larry throws in Hutchins Barbecue, Wolf Burgers, and Crush Taco. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Hutchins, come on. Right. Love Hutchins. Texas Twinkies, <laughs> yeah. get me some. Now, I got a Texas Twinkie mm. there because uh, Air Rescue, one of their holes, they had a couple of Texas Twinkies there, mm. and I got there early enough mm-hmm. that there were a couple left, and so... I say I didn't have anything to eat. That was the one thing I had to eat all day so long. So good, that was my Texas breakfast. Twinkies. And if you don't know, like I'm from here and talking about it, but it's not only on the weekends. Hutchins has changed Texas Twinkies for every day of the week. So you can go there anytime and get a Texas Twinkie. They're so good. Jalapeno, cream cheese, tons of smoked brisket wrapped in a bacon. I was like, I'm yep. doing an advertisement for Hutchins right now. Um, I love right you. Ahead. <laughs> so, speaking of air rescue, if you need your air conditioning unit or heater checked, uh, definitely uh, Aaron uh, and his team, they're terrific. Make sure you check with them. Go local. Um, say thank you. Say thank you. Uh, the Lynx Ladies, are you going to be on the Lynx Ladies show tomorrow night with uh, Begley? Mm-mm, I don't think so. Don't think I haven't so. heard anything from the Lynx Ladies. Uh-huh. You're we'll a member be... of the Lynx Ladies, aren't you? Uh, I think so. Yeah, but um, we'll, 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 be at we'll, I, we'll be we'll be at ICC we'll uh, tomorrow Bay night Bay. for our last night here. <coughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, who else have we uh, not mentioned? Oh, uh, Yelly Belly Chocolates. Yes. Yes, Yelly Belly. If you need some Yelly Belly Chocolates, if you need We're, personalized she, or business, here, she? she is. Right there. There you go. Yelly Belly. Uh, if you uh, need some personalized or special uh, candies for oh, the holidays. Oh, get out of town. Man, she kills it. Uh, she kills it. She kills, she kills it. it. She's done some with whiskey, and we got some uh, t- Christmas time. Yep. I got boxes of her stuff for gifts, and, oh, yeah. and everybody loved them. Oh, my gosh. She's does a great job. Chocolatier master. And then uh, my buddy out in South Carolina, John, at Palmetto State Armory. Um, if you've seen a couple of pictures that I've posted of what I'll call the uh, American gun that I have. That was Palmetto State Armory uh, gun and uh, custom paint job they did on it. Excellent job. They got excellent uh, stuff there. They're actually going to be, I don't know if I should be mentioning this or not, they're getting ready to start producing their own ammo. Oh, Um, really? They have a huge machine. They invested several million dollars in a machine from Europe, had it shipped over. They have a huge warehouse they bought and are getting ready to start producing their own ammo. Well, they'll uh, make so, bank on that. That's then. interesting. Yeah. Well, ammo yeah. so hard to get now. Exactly, it is. Um, Crux cigars. Well, yeah. We, all the vendors. All the cigar vendors. Again, thank you for showing up at Hackfest. Awesome. Um, the booze vendors. All the booze vendors. Thank Pocock you Brothers. for all your booze given to me in my belly. I love it. There you go. Made my belly warm. Exactly. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, Busy H- B. H one uh, insurance. H1 Insurance. Uh, uh, Lee. Uh, Ostriger. Yeah. I was going to say Lee Realty. Hope. Better Realty, put a jack of his uh, last yeah. name. Um, nice soft shirt, Lee. Thank you. Oh, and, and <laughs> also, uh, Larry said, the Cigars and Guns Shirt Club. So exactly. uh, make sure you, if you want, if you like t-shirts and uh, cool shirts, they have a different shirt each month. Make sure you go to Cigars oh, really? and Guns. Yes. Hey, that's yeah. cool. I'll check that out. Yeah. And, uh, I love cigars and I love guns. I only shirts. So there you go. It's a win. Mm-hmm. Busy B. Let's not forget him. If you need photography or a DJ, yep. call Busy. A lot of photography was uh, that that you're gonna see was done by Busy and his crew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go with to, a fancy camera, not with a cell phone. He had look a real camera. He's and, what? and he does excellent work. Um, yeah, I'll post some of the pictures uh, that he sent me uh, on, he took on the our one web of me. page. Yeah, yeah, yep. he took the one of you. He took the one of 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 Carl uh, and the Gopher. Yeah. 
C Cinderella story. It was, a, it was a great, great day, great day. That damn gopher I tried to chase him all over the course and just could never catch him. And what's that? <laughs> you had him at gunpoint and he still got away, you He bastard. still got away. Uh, yeah, just, just it's heartbreaking, but I'll get him next year. Definitely <laughs> next year. Definitely next year. I'm, I'm going golfing with the Dalai Lama here in a couple weeks. You know, big hitter the Dalai. Yeah. Big hitter. Yep. Just show your shirt there, buddy. Anyway. So, Thanks um, to the Frakes family. Yeah, they, the they, they fam. them, uh, you know, and, and and Brandon and Megan, uh, they did an awesome job. Begley was the one that coordinated all of the the schedules and everything. Oh, really? Yeah, so wow. she did an excellent job on that. It would not have. And Andrew gone mentioned, off. and and Andrew mentioned that she did such a great job compared to last year. Uh, that it was just it, it made things a lot easier. It uh, did, but. You know, last year was the first year. She didn't do a bad job. They just didn't no. know what they didn't know. Yeah. And this is only the and, second year. And now, knowing what they knew, she did a fantastic job. And I can only imagine next year is going to be... Next year will definitely be sold out. There and will be people that want to come. Almost sold out this year. And will not, yeah, they were eight people short of, of totally selling out. Yeah. Um, but this year... This and, we next picked year up, and we picked up eight since then for that for sure. Yeah, for sure. Well... Larry will be there. Rick will be there next year. I got a couple people from work, some other people that didn't play this year already saying it. So it's going to be a race to see who can sign up Now, first. the only question is, where are we going to do this one? You know, I think... Not I th at the same I, golf course. I think, I think they'll let us come back. I don't think we... Mm. I, don't, I don't think we wore our welcome there. I don't think... Uh... We'll talk about that off camera. Yeah. All right. We'll see. <laughs> so, anyway, no I want to thank everybody... <laughs> For showing up tonight, and I want to thank Maggie for a great show uh, and a great visit. Uh, it's always a pleasure when she comes down. I love her and Preston both. And uh, we had a great dinner. Yep. A and uh, that's one of the nice things. And you know, and Jamin. It was great because it was free for me. A great. <laughs> I mean, you cooked it, so, I mean, okay, it was okay. But great? I don't know if I would call it great. I mean, you know, Jay, Jay said... You're trying to brag on yourself, Ron. No, no, no. But, uh, you know, Jay said, you know, he does, they, they do events all the time. He does interviews and stuff like that. This is the first... I was the first one that, you know, he came into my home, and he had, and we fed him dinner, and we had a great time. And he said it was so personalized that it really made him feel special and... Well, that's what and I like about what we do. And that's exactly why is. I like what it's, we do. It's, hey, let's come have a conversation. We don't need a script or anything. I mean, we have a general idea of what we want to talk about. But oh, don't spoil it. These people thought we had a script. Well, but, I you mean, know, it's... The structure it's, we got It's here. all about... It, it's kind of the it's kind of the it's whole cigar the, culture exactly, and community. It's, 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 the, let's come and have a talk and and let's just talk this, about life and cigars and wine and have a good time. This would be like the same thing let's as see if we were just hanging us. out in the lounge. Yeah, let's you know, see just see having it. a conversation. Let's see where exactly. it takes us. Cigar so. community, just chit chatting. Yeah, and I mean we're we're an hour and twenty two minutes into it. We still got six or seven people watching, so we appreciate you guys hanging Suckers. in there. <laughs> yeah, so I love it. Uh, thanks again. Ah, oh, Sean, love him. We'll definitely see you guys next weekend. And uh, like I said, we've got uh, Jay coming back from uh, DC Cigars. Who else do we have? We, we're going to do a uh, Wild Cigar Bar coming up here in a couple weeks. And we are going to have some more Cigar Company spotlights. So again, we're going to redo uh, uh, Cigar Clown. And uh, I picked They're going to get me some stickers. They're going to get some stickers. And, and some we're crazy clowns. Gonna have we're going to uh, have, uh, we're going to do a, a special one with uh, Nathan. Uh, Eventually, hopefully, yeah. in his backyard. Uh, Doug Bye, from Frank. Bocock Brothers said he'll be up here uh, and wants to do one with us. Bocock. So we, we got That's a couple things that. coming Bocock. up. Bocock. Bocock. So Bocock. thanks, guys. Have a good night, and we'll see you next week. Thanks again, guys. Thank you. I'm going to drink the rest of that bottle. That's really good stuff. Do it. Do it.